We're going to talk today about kinematics of particles uh, in curvilinear motion with Cartesian coordinates. So say we have a particle P that's traveling along this curve. At a, so there we go, particle P. And we know that we can define the position by using a position vector from the origin to P. And if you want to see the video where we define this, I'll link that down below. So we know with Cartesian coordinates, of course, we have an X, Y, and a Z component. And we also have these unit vectors, I, J, and K. So we have I, J, and K in the Z direction. So if we're looking at this particle P and we want to determine where its position is, well, we're going to really be looking to see where it falls in the X, Y, and Z planes. So we're going to represent this position just like that. So we're going to have a Z component, an X component, and a Y component. So we can begin now to write some of our equations. So position of our particle P in Cartesian coordinates is going to be written as R of T equals basically just the sum of the X, Y, and Z parts. So we're going to have X of T I plus Y of T J plus Z of T K. So velocity, we know, is the derivative of the position with respect to time. So we can write that as d over dt of x of t i plus d over dt y of t j plus d over dt z of t k. So with these unit vectors i, j, and k, it's important to remember that these are constants. We're not going to be taking the derivative of these. These are just going to be, think of them almost as placeholders. We're just never going to touch them, and they're going to be used purely just to represent the x, y, and z components. So we can further simplify this down by just writing a script v x plus v subscript y plus v subscript z. And that is just going to be kind of shorthand for us to write when we are looking for velocity. And now we know acceleration is the second derivative of the position with respect to time and the first derivative of velocity with respect to time. So let's write that out. So we're going to have d2 squared for dt i plus sorry, we ran out of room a little bit, but I think you get the idea, so we're going to really be able to, again, simplify this by subscripts and writing this out as a subscript x plus a subscript y plus a subscript z. So we can really say here that each of these X, Y, and Z components are independent. So in other words, they're like having rectilinear motion in each direction. 
And if you want to see the video on rectilinear motion, I'll link that below as well. But really, you can take, you know, a problem may say, what is the you know, acceleration in the y direction? And we can pull that out. And that's one of the benefits of the Cartesian coordinate system, because we can really just solve, you know, each of these components for whatever you need. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. That really helps support my channel and helps me continue making videos for you guys. I'll see you next time.